Hi FlossTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Darren, aka Dizzy Stitcher, and welcome to my stitch with me. So today we're gonna to be working on, I think it's pronounced Joyeux Noel, means Merry Christmas <laughs> in French. Um, so we're gonna work on this one today, so a bit of a different kind of stitch with me. So, and this one I am doing on the 28 count um, ice blue cashel linen. So, so I hope you're all well and staying safe wherever you are. So as you're aware, over here the weather has changed, so it's meant to be summer now, and we've got rain. So we forecast to get up to. 250 mils of rain over the next couple of days, so there's going to be a lot of probably flooding around, so the rivers will definitely uh, fill up, same as the creeks. But we do need the rain, so I'm not moaning. Hopefully it means I get uh, flooded in so I can't go to work. <laughs> do a bit more stitching, yay. But this one I'm doing as you can see, one over one full cross. This is my very first sampler. Kind of like it, it's a bit different to normal because obviously it's blocks of colour rather than just your standard confetti that you normally get. Hope you can see this all okay. Because the weather is so dull and dreary, I've had to. Uh, Put the, the light on so that it shows up clear enough. Now the fabric on here kind of looks more like a whitish greyish colour. But trust me, it's blue. Work has died off really bad. Um, I don't know what's going off there. Still waiting to find out when we're going to finish work, whether it be the 18th or the 23rd. I'm hoping it's going to be the 18th. This gives me time to go out and do my Christmas shopping rather than having to wait till the Christmas Eve, because no doubt that will be absolutely chaotic going out on Christmas Eve doing Christmas shopping. I am not like my eldest brother. My eldest brother does that every year. At least until Christmas Eve. And then goes out and does all his Christmas shopping. He's done that for as long as I can remember. Where's my... I'm kind of organised. I generally start mine end of November, beginning of December. Generally. My twin brother always starts it in September. Always. <laughs> so, he waits until after our birthday. And then, that's the gentleman the day after our birthday. He turns around and goes, what do you want for Christmas? I don't know, it's still months away yet. And then he just keeps nagging and nagging and nagging. So you end up asking for something that you don't really want. <laughs> just so that you can give him an idea of what to buy you. But then he buys you something completely different anyway. Um, it's always been the same. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you remember me mentioning on my video when I first started doing this, I mentioned about a really thin line. And I couldn't get it to show up on um, the video. But if you look here, see what I mean? It's like a really, really one thin strand there and you're like is that one hole with just this has moved out of the way or two holes and then you follow it down and it gets thicker so and here like you see it starts getting thicker again and you're like no it's definitely two holes so that's the only thing I find about linen but it's just like stitching on any normal fabric 
except for trying to decipher where you got one holes or two holes. So I don't know if this is going to be my last stitch with me before Christmas. I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to at least get another one in. But we'll see how hectic things are. So once I've done my stitch with me today, I'm then going to go and put my Christmas tree up and see how long that lasts before the cats destroy it. My, it's brought to my brother, well, my mum, yesterday. So today's Sunday, um, just so that you're away. So I spoke to my mum last night and my brother was at home. Um, he was sorting out his Christmas decorations to put up. So he was putting up the tree. <laughs> and then when I got up this morning, I messaged him and he sent me a picture of the tree. Looks nice. Well, it's not as good as he normally does it, but blue. And he said the cats over there have already started attacking the tree. <laughs> it's been up literally maybe three hours. The cats have already won, but attacked it. So the cats there are my cats as well. So they're what I got. I got them before I decided to move over here. Um, so there's three, there's a ginger one called Lucy, I don't know what it is with ginger cats, but she is absolutely crazy, she loves to attack the dogs, so she's always tormenting them, and she also goes out tormenting the neighbour's dogs over there as well, she'd go and sit on the fence on purpose, just down the reach of them, just to torment them. Which is funny. And then I have two black and white cats over there as well. One called Sifa. And one called Leo. So both Leo and Sifa were meant to be female cats. So got them. We used to have, well it was my twin brother's cat. Um, called Celine. But we used to call her Slinky because she used to slink down the stairs. Um... And she was 21 um, when she passed. Um, so Lucy was missing them. So we decided to get, well, I decided to get another cat to keep her company. So I wanted another female. So anyway, my cousin found a rescue place that had a female cat. Well, female kitten. Uh, and was going to be ready in about two to three weeks. So I said, okay, I'll have it. It's time to hold it for me. Anyway, in the meantime, my brother found another cat on line, which was um, ready for homing. So decided to get that one. Now they said it was a little girl. So anyway, got this kitten, well, you got this kitten. When I got home, this thing, thing was tiny. Definitely wasn't old enough to have been removed from its mum, that's for sure. They said it was six or seven weeks old. There was no way it was six or seven weeks old. Um, I'm guessing it was four. So anyway, we named the cat, what did we call him? Uh, Fluffy, because it was a really fluffy little kitten. So we called him Fluffy. Anyway. Um, keeping an eye on Fluffy, and then a week later, the other kitten was ready. So I went and got the other kitten. Now this other kitten had been to the vets for checkups, just to make sure everything was fine with it coming from a rescue place. And they confirmed it was a girl, and it was called Devon. And I was like, okay. So I thought, well, I'm not keeping the name Devon. I'm not a fan of that one. Um, so anyway, we get this kitten home. And the two kittens instantly 
connected, so you need to chase each other around. And maybe about two weeks, three weeks after uh, I'd got the second kitten. The first kitten was playing around and was upside down attacking something. And I was like, well, that's not a girl. It's definitely a little boy. So I said, like, okay then. So Fluffy became Sifa. Anyway, as the cats got older, it was like, well, I need to look into getting them neutered because obviously we don't want little babies because I know cats become sexually active once they get to about six months old. So we take the cats to the vet because they wanted to just check them to make sure they'd be at the ideal weight and stuff like that for getting spayed. So they checked over Sifa and they said, yeah, we'd like him to probably be a little bit bigger. I think he was the runt, to be fair. So we'd like him to be a little bit bigger. So if we can hold off a little bit longer, then that would be fine. But obviously, because they're coming of that age, if we need to get him in early, we'll get him in early. Anyway, they then picked up the second kitten. I can't remember what I called the kitten. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, they picked up the other kitten. And they were checking that one over. Now this second kitten was really fluffy. Um, no, it wasn't that fluffy when I got it, but it turned out it's a fluffy cat. Um, anyway, they're checking that one over, checking its weight and everything like that. And they said, well, there's no need to rush about getting them neutered. We can definitely wait a bit longer. And I was like, well, I don't want any kittens. So oh, you've got no chance of that one. But anyway, this cat had been to the vet's several times before I picked it up. And this cat's a little boy. Mm, seriously? Uh, yep. So, so you definitely no worry about him getting pregnant. And because he was so fluffy, um, where his back end is, was black. Because they're both black and white cats. But his back end part was black, so you couldn't see any of his bits. So, so yeah, so... A little, what was Devon, then got renamed Leo. <laughs> um, so needless to say, I didn't have to rush into getting them muted. So, but they, those two themselves are characters. Um, they go out when it gets warmer, and they come home. Most cats bring home birds, mice, whatever. These two bring home feathers. I don't know where they get them from, but you'll see them come jumping over the fence and walking in really proud because they have a feather. Uh, and they, they sit and play with these feathers for hours. Um, you try to take them off them, they don't like it. So, And they still do that now. So, well, oh, they are... I've been over here two years, so they must be about three years old now. And they still bring home feathers every summer play with so yes but needless to say my brother was nicknamed Leo Fluffy because he is a big ball of fluff um, I don't know what kind of cat he's crossed with um, some people seem to think it's a Maine Coon because he is a big cat and he's big and fluffy so my brother calls him Fluffy and it's like it's not fluffy but then when you speak to my mum and you say oh how's like Leo doing she was like who's Leo Big cat. She went, oh, Fluffy. Said, no, he's not Fluffy. He's, he's Leo. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, he's not got a new name. <laughs> but, yeah, but they're such characters. Um, he, Sifa is one that will walk in and he has to do the loudest meow he can just to let you know that he's arrived. Doesn't want anything, just to let you know he's in the house. Um, but he's he's a small cat. He's not a very big cat. Um, Leo, on the other hand, to say the size of him, has got the most quietest meow you will have ever heard from any cat. Literally, if you have to be right next to him to hear him meow. But 
he's a soft, gentle giant. He loves coming for cuddles. And um, he he knows when my mum's carers are there. Now, the carers come on a certain date. They come and do paperwork. And he just has to come up and fuss them while they're trying to do the paperwork. So they can't get the paperwork done. It takes them forever to get it done <laughs> because he just won't let them. So, yeah, so they're very characters. And I love playing with paper balls as well. Uh, and tissues. You have a box of tissues down. Well, Leo, anyway, the main one, big one. He will come up and he will gladly steal your tissues out of the box. The number of times we've gone to bed and got up and there's just been tissues everywhere. <laughs> he completely takes them out of the box and shreds them. But they love playing fetch with uh, paper balls. Ginger cat come to bomb me again. No, no, don't get on it. Ginger, no. <laughs> He's trying to climb on the, uh, onto the piece. <laughs> I just let the cat out. I don't know if, I, if you remember in my last video, I mentioned that my mum had to have the flooring and everything removed. So, the flooring in the sitting room is now carpeted. Probably just, I'm just sort in ginger because it keeps trying to get my fabric. Seat there. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the the living room is uh, all sorted now. So my brother sent me some pictures. So in my living room over there, it used to be the walls were painted. So I had um, blue paint on the chimney breast, and then. The rest of the room was like a, a creamy colour. But my mum decided she wanted wallpaper up on the chimney breast. So she's got um, flowery wallpaper on there now. The big flowers. Um, but she likes it. But the pictures that he sent, the living room now looks like a bedroom. Well, I suppose in a, in a way it is a bedroom because it's my mum's where my mum sleeps now. So, the only thing I wasn't, didn't like on there was the curtains. She's got like a, a pale pink curtains. Now, the, in the picture that you sent, I said, they look like velvet, velvety type of curtains. Mum says, oh, they are. She says, they're really nice. I said, like, well, I'll take your word for that one. They're not my style but she likes him so as long as she's comfortable and happy that's the main thing so she went to see the opticians the other day and they've said that everything's fine they checked her eyes out again and said that a new prescription that they did were fine so she doesn't need any kind of magnifier or anything like that to read because they thought she might have needed one well, they said, no, everything's perfect with her eyes now, so she's happy. And then she's got the doctor coming out on Wednesday. Um, so this is the specialist to see why she keeps going dizzy. So fingers crossed, they might be able to sort things out for her now. I'm hoping anyway.
So yes, so everything's going good over there. Still trying to work out what time I've got to call them on Christmas Day because my eldest brother's going down uh, with my niece. Um, but he's not a, an early person. So he's also fashionably late every time. So if you say he's going to be there at 10 o'clock, you guarantee he won't be there till 11. So you end up having to tell him the wrong time in order to get in there on time. <laughs> it's what we always do. So say we're going somewhere for, for 10, we'll say to him, oh yeah, we'll, we're setting off at 9 o'clock. Because you know he's going to be there at 10 o'clock. And then that's the time you really want to set off. So he's always fashionably late, my brother, eldest brother. We always say to him he'll be late for his own funeral. So, when I was speaking to my mum on that, they said he's not coming till about lunchtime. Now, lunchtime for him is probably around about two o'clock. And it's like, well, that's a bit late for me to ring, because two o'clock over there will be midnight here on Christmas Day. So, it's like, yeah, now that one's a little bit too late, so he needs to be there early. So, they're going to try and sort something out. Either that or I'm going to have to get up early on Boxing Day. And ring them. So I'll wait to see what they decide. Hopefully it'll be here. And call them on Christmas Day. And we're going to do a, a video call. So that I can see everybody. So I think the last time I did a video call with them was for my mum's birthday, which was again in September. This is a couple of days before mine. So, it would be good to see them all again. Especially with my niece, because she's now obviously a teenager. So she's growing up fast and... If you've got kids or nieces or whatever, you know that they change real quickly as well. So, good to see how she's changed since last time I saw her. She's a really good girl. Never had any problems with her whatsoever. Ever since she was a little baby. She's always done as she's told. She's always been polite, which is a very rare thing nowadays. Yeah, she's always been polite. She doesn't backchat you. She doesn't swear at you. So, yeah, she's always been a good kid. Yeah, my twin brother used to fall out every now and then because he always used to tease her. He used to wind her up all the time. So... She didn't take any mess from him. She used to smack him. <laughs> um, even as a young kid, she's always done it. She's always smacked him for tormenting her. Whereas I always used to stick up for her. So, <laughs> so I was her favourite uncle. I'm saying to this day, whenever we send Christmas cards or birthday cards, she always writes. On, she always writes something that she misses me loads and wishes I were back there. So hopefully not long, and I'll be able to see her again. That should be fun. So, when I left her, she uh, she takes after my eldest brother. He's quite tall because he took after my dad, <laughs> and uh, so she's uh, she was already. I mean, 
When I left, she was 13. When did I leave? 2018. Yeah, she was 13. So she was already almost as tall as me. I mean, I'm five foot eight. So she was almost as tall as me. So obviously she'll have grown a bit since I left. So I do to think how tall she is now. She'll probably be looking down at me next time I see her. <laughs> now this in case you haven't figured out what it is that I'm stitching is a holly leaf. <laughs> Uh, this was the free pattern uh, that I put a link to in my normal floss tube, uh, video number 31. So if you are wanting a free Christmas sampler, that's where you'll find the link. So video number 31. Because I did ask, get a couple of people ask where they could get this pattern from. I don't know if it's still available. I'm assuming it will be. Uh, they didn't say how long they were going to keep it up on their phone. Now, the, I'm doing this in DMZ colours, uh, which I had to get some help working out the colours for this one, uh, because the, f the floss that they used was, I don't know which floss it is, um, weeks or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and obviously I don't have a collection of all the fancy flosses. I have DMC, I have a couple of the Weeks and Clone Cottons which I got sent to me. But there's not a lot there. I tried going through those colours to see if I could find any for, for this, but I don't really have any. So, Nicole Devonelli uh, designs. She was d started this one, and she put she was doing the conversion. I just contacted her and asked her where she got the pa colours from, and it was somebody had waited out for her, so she just sent me a, a list <laughs> of the DMCs I needed. So, so I just went through and all my different projects and found the colours I needed. Funnily enough, most of the colours I needed were in the super-sized tiger family. So I'm kind of borrowing them from there. I think I've got enough floss for that one for now. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so you won't have to borrow some pieces because obviously by the time I get to around to using them all, it's going to be 10 years, so. But well, I guess I have to say, I'm not really a sampler person. I enjoy stitching it. It's, uh, it's quite easy to follow. So who knows? I may do another sampler at some point. And I've got another sampler, which again was another freebie one. Um, but then it's just working out. Where I'm going to do that one. And what I'm going to do it on. Run my thread so I can get to where I need to start next. Don't know if you guys do that instead of just cutting it off. Just run your threads to the area you need to work to. <laughs> I find it easy. Everyone's ready for Christmas. As I say, 
By the time this goes up, I think there's like going to be about two weeks left. Or just over two weeks till Christmas. It's coming around really, really fast. It won't be two weeks. It'll be just over a week by the time this goes up. So just over a week before Christmas. <clears throat> so yeah, it's coming around really, really fast. Christmas always does that, doesn't it? It takes forever to get here, but as soon as December hits, it just flies. Uh, I think it's probably because of all the running around and trying to organise stuff that you, you need to do. Yeah, Christmas always goes really quick. Now, I like Christmas. It is my favourite holiday. But as I say, over here in Australia, it's not... It doesn't seem as big. Uh, I've not heard one Christmas song on the radio yet. And bearing in mind we're in the middle of December. I've not heard one Christmas song. Some of the shops have only just just put up the Christmas decorations, but they're not a lot of decorations. So I'm used to, like in the UK, where everything's like picked out and everything with all lights and even the shopping centres in the UK were all decked out with lights and hanging decorations and trees and and over here it's like they're really sparse with regards to the decorations. So yeah I'm going to say even on the music streaming that you have over in the UK, uh, over in Australia, they don't allow you to pick UK like music albums if you like. So, I put that in the wrong spot. The frog is cold. Um, yeah, so I tried searching for like. UK albums, Christmas albums, that, I'm sorry if you can hear the birds going off in the background, I don't know what's going off out there, could have had a fight with someone, um, but yeah, there used to be a couple of Christmas albums that I used to listen to over in the UK, I thought, well, bound to get them over here on the stream, music streaming, no, you can't get them, no, it plays like, Australian ones and American ones. Or it's like playlists that people have done. And I was listening to one the other day and it was a complete load of rubbish. And I was like, this ain't Christmassy songs. And then I listened to another one and all it was was uh, Mr. Buble. I'm not a big fan of Mr. Buble. I don't mind one or two of his songs, but not a whole album full of his songs. So. Yeah, so I was all in the mood for listening to Christmas music and couldn't do it. So, never mind. I think what I'll do when I go back to the UK, I've still got loads of CDs and everything over there. I didn't bring everything over with me. I'm going to find my Christmas ones out and I'm bringing them over with me. <laughs> so then what, next Christmas, I'll have some music to listen to. Mind you, that depends when we're allowed to travel back again to the UK. Hopefully that might not be too long now, seeing as I've started rolling out the vaccine over there. So we will see how that goes. So hopefully international travel will be on the cards again very soon. we doing this pattern. I'm not used to using pattern keeper. And you forget what it's like when you've got to having use a paper chart or this one's on my tablet so it's just a case of zooming on the area that I need and stitching from there. So <coughs> I 
it's a bit strange when you're having to work out where you are and how much of each you need to do. Look at these are all little small little motifs, so it's not that hard to lose count, he says, even though I've already had to frog a bit out. But it's fine. So if you watched my last Floss Tube video, you'll see we had some kangaroos in the, in the paddock around the house. So the three little ones, they come every now and then. Uh, there used to be four, so one's obviously disappeared somewhere. Um, so they, they turn up every now and then. Um, the big one that you see going towards them. Now, if you've followed me from the start, he was the one that was in one of my earlier videos. He's a big boy. Um, he hangs around here all the time. Uh, you'll generally find him, like in summertime, he'll be asleep under one of the trees. Um, keeping cool. But yeah, he hangs around here all the time. So, I don't know if... The smaller ones are part of his gang, or he was just going to say hello. No idea. But they all seem to disappear together, so. But yeah, the big one, he's always hanging around. He likes to torment the dog, the neighbor's dog. The other day, he actually went. Now the, the neighbor's yard is like fenced off where the dogs are. It's only like a chain fence. So he likes to go right up to the fence, knowing that the, the bigger dog over there will come running over. He just stands there and torments it. And this other dog's just barking at him cra like crazy. And he just stands there as if to say, yeah, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and he does that for about five, ten minutes, and then he just hops away a little bit and goes and lies down. So still in sight of the dog, just to torment him. Which you don't mind, but when the neighbours aren't in, the dog just continues to bark at the kangaroo, which is really annoying. Because this dog it just barks and barks and barks for hours. How he's still got a voice and able to bark is beyond me. But he does. So this piece I thought would be a nice, quick, easy stitch. I thought I'll have this one done in no time. Look how long I was. Didn't realise that there's actually a fair few stitches in these little motifs. It's actually going to take me longer than I thought. I thought oh, I'll have this one done in maybe about a week or two. You know. I mean, just in this angel... And these two little motifs here. I mean, that was like 350 stitches, I think. So it's definitely going to be a decent sized piece. And this one's not finished yet. I ran out of, well, the thread ran out. And I was like, well, I'm not loading it up just for like, what, one, two, three, four, about five stitches. And I thought you can wait because it's the pattern's repeated again, so... Next angels round about here, and then you've got the motifs going underneath. So I thought, oh, I'll just wait until I get back to that part, and then I'll stitch it then, fill it in then. Obviously, I've obviously got this green piece to the correct size for each near enough, well, near enough correct size for each motif. So I should have done that for the other ones, but never mind. I 
That's another thing as well that makes it up with regards to linen. So you get these great big blocks here. And you get tiny little ones. So your stitches are all uneven. Well, as long as you can see what the design is, I suppose it doesn't really matter. And you can tell what everything is. I suppose I'm going to have to get used to this kind of stuff because as you, if you watch my last video, you'll see that I've got the my first Mirabilia, um, which is the Archangel. And that one's got to be done on 32 count, which I've never done before. But then I've got to, I don't know whether to do it in the colour that it suggests on the chart or if I'd be alright just to change the colour up. So, I'm going to let me know if you've done Mirabilia's, anyone. Do you generally go with the, the cord for fabric that it says in, in the colourway, or do you just pick whichever colour you want? I know there's a fair few people out there who stitch the mirrors, um, but they generally um, change the some of the colours around on it. Not necessarily the fabric, just the colours of the the floster, because yeah. most of the mirrors are ladies, um, so they change like, the colours of the dresses and everything. So, but they never say if they change the fabric. So, I mean, now if you do mirrors, are you best off sticking with the, the fabric that they say, colourway, or are you best, or can you change it to whatever colour you want? I'm assuming you can change it to whatever colour you want. But will it still look all right? So, but I'm looking forward to, well, kind of looking forward to starting that one. And kind of not. After seeing the amount of metallic -y threads in there, as you know, we metallic threads don't really get on. And I think there's a lot of the metallic thread in the wings of the Archangel. So yes, I'm definitely not looking forward to that bit. Especially for my first time using 32 count as well. Well, again, we'll see how we go when I get around to starting it. I'm going to try and get all the, the stuff for it first before I start it. Because I'm going to say it calls for like seven packs of Mill Hill beads or something like that. So there's definitely going to be a lot of beads on there. Which I know they would would be anyway. There's always a lot of beads on the on the mirrors. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be quite a big piece as well because on thirty two count, I think you go over two rather than over one. I think from how I watched everybody else do it anyway, it is so. Or even if not, I think it's still a fair size piece of fabric just for just doing it over one as well. So, but I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Who knows? I might like it. And again, I might not. <laughs> Funny, we had the berries in between. Don't kind of look like leaves, they just look like kind of green blobs. <laughs> but I'm assuming once I've got the, the berries in, they'll look a bit different. I am enjoying this piece. So, well, I 
don't think it'll be one that I'll sp spend a lot of time on each time I do it. I'll probably just do like a couple of motifs every now and then. So this one's definitely going to be a, a long-term project. Unless I get in the mood for stitching on a sample instead of a full coverage. I suppose sometimes it's a good thing. You should break from doing full coverage. That's what I'm enjoying about the... Uh, the little Mill Hill kit that I'm doing. And the little Christmas ornaments. It's something different. I do miss working on the, on the full coverage pieces, though. But I'm only going to be working on... The Christmas ones for maybe about another week, and then I'll be going back to working on my other pieces. But then the the hate ornament ones will probably get a fair bit of attention anyway because the hades. So I want to try and get those done by next Christmas, so then I can at least have them on display. Assuming I can get them all finished in time and then finished off. However, I'm going to get them finished. Might just actually turn them into proper ornaments or get them framed. I haven't decided yet. Well, that's a long way out of the way yet. I haven't finished them. I did that stitch one. There again. That's a good thing we're working on a 28 count. Do a mistake, you just go straight over it, you're not going to know. <laughs> the stitches are that small, you can't see them properly anyway. So I'm going to finish this thread off and then I'm going to call it a day. I might do some more work on this after. Finish off his little hollies. We will see. I apologise if you can hear some idiots in the car behind, outside. So over here, for some reason, it starts raining and everyone thinks they've got to go out and do skids and burnouts down the street because of the rain. Because, yeah, there's nothing more stupid than wearing your tyres out when you need them when it's raining. <coughs> but, hey, well, it's their tyres, not mine. As long as I don't kill anyone, that's all that matters. Right, so that's all done. So, I'll leave that there. So, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, something a bit different instead of a, a full coverage. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Um... If I don't do another stitch with me um, before Christmas, well, before the end of the year at least, I'm hoping to get one done, I say, next week. Um, so that'll be just before Christmas. But if not, um, if you don't get around to watching Floss Tube much over the next couple of weeks, I hope you have a, a, a good holiday. Happy Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Um, have a good festive period. Um, try, don't drink and drive obviously. hope you have plenty of food. Um, have you ha get a chance to um, have your family around and be around your loved ones. Um, but if I do get a chance to do another one, then obviously I'll say this all again. Um, <laughs> but stay safe, guys. Um, take care. Have a good time. And if I don't see you before, I will catch you in my next month's tube or next year. Yeah. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.